What's up guys, I'm Joe. Today I'm talking about the new Marilyn Manson album, Heaven Upside Down. So, Marilyn Manson is back. Are back. Yeah, I mean, they're technically a band, Marilyn Manson, but I think at this point it's alright to conflate the two and just kind of talk about Marilyn Manson as a person. The band has gone through a plethora of lineup changes throughout the years, so I think it's alright to just refer to Manson, uh, you know, whether it be his new album, their new album, whatever. Anyway, Manson is back with his 10th studio album, Heaven Upside Down, and he's been on a pretty good streak, honestly. Um, I feel like he's sort of flying under the radar at this point. Not too much in the public's attention, but I mean doing fairly well. I know when I went on Amazon to check out the CD for this one, it was uh, already sold out, so that's pretty cool. Like I said, in this later part of his career here, he's been on a pretty damn good streak. Uh, last album, 2015, The Pale Emperor, was a very mature offering from Manson, one that most people didn't really expect. The album before that, Born Villain, you know, kind of showed a more, you know, stripped down Manson, going back to his roots. And then the following album, The Pale Emperor, really threw everyone for a loop with this kind of bluesy, sometimes punky album. Uh, very laid back, very restrained, but ultimately just a very great album. And I think what made it so was this sort of collaboration going on with this guy Tyler Bates. You know, a guy that's been more so connected with you know, film scores or video game scores, but ultimately worked together with Manson to create The Pale Emperor, and that was just a really fantastic record. Uh, so that collaboration is continuing on here. And I think what you get with Heaven Upside Down, I feel like a lot of reviews that I've seen so far are basically saying, you know, Old Manson is back here. Just going back to the shock, going back to the industrial sound, I really don't think that's necessarily the case. While those elements are definitely here, I feel like this is a continuation on from the Pale Emperor, but, you know, informed by Manson's past work. I mean, you're still getting those punky, sometimes bluesy, groovy, you know, kind of instrumentals that definitely stem from The Pale Emperor, but you're also getting classic Manson as far as kind of the shock goes, the attitude, the anger, and the angst, and you know, it's really refreshing to hear that. A song such as We Know Where You Fucking Live is just classic Manson. It came paired with a fairly controversial music video, definitely check that out, but he's just hard-hitting riffs. They're definitely industrially tinged, you know, like his old sound is. The song kind of has the angst and the feeling and aggression of Antichrist Superstar, or otherwise even maybe Hollywood, as far as the kind of punky nature of the riffs go. But I like that you're getting an aggressive Marilyn Manson here as far as the shouted vocals are going on in the chorus, as well as just, you know, the slightly kind of controversial nature of the lyrics. I mean, you get a lot of that on here. And, you know, while I don't think, you know, anything is particularly groundbreaking as far as the lyrics go, it is somewhat refreshing to get a sort of controversial record as far as mainstream music goes this year. As I was listening to this album a couple times, you know, I kind of realized that, you know, despite the fact that there's been a lot of great albums this year, you know, nothing's really controversial at all as far as mainstream goes. Everything is pretty straightforward, pretty light, and, you know, in a time where there's a lot of political divide and just, you know, social uproar, you think that would be reflected in music a lot more. So it was kind of refreshing to hear Manson kind of going back to this sort of angst and this aggression. It comes back up again in Jesus Crisis, where like I said, while the lyrics aren't necessarily groundbreaking, he's definitely going for, you know, something that'll make you feel a little uneasy. Now that track in particular is really cool, it's got like kind of a nice bouncy feel to it, but then it has that really great breakdown. Um, in there, you know, Manson again just screaming these vocals, which is really cool. You're hearing that aggression, that kind of energy. He definitely sounds very passionate about this project, which is cool to see so far into his career. Same kind of thing can be said about Blood Honey, which is sort of a ballad. I like the sort of piano going on there. Um, if you're familiar with Korn's Untitled album, which, you know, for many people is not a very good album, I always thought it was pretty cool. Uh, this sounds like that song Kiss on there. Definitely check that one out, it's a cool song. Probably one of the few times Korn ever really dabbled into a ballad-type territory. But again, with the song Blood Honey, the kind of sexual connotations make for a fairly controversially tinged song, you know. Moving our way back to the beginning, Revelation number 12 is a great opener here. Lots of energy, very punky kind of riffs. It's got a heaviness to it. Again, kind of in the spirit of Antichrist Superstar. You know, just the way the energy just hits you, and it just it gets the album off to a great start. Another standout to me is Say 10, uh, which was going to be the name of the album at first. The album got pushed a little bit. A couple more songs were introduced, such as the title track, Heaven Upside Down. 
this is a good song as well. I like the atmospheric, creepy kind of verses going on here. You know, Manson hasn't really delved into this sort of creepiness in a while with his records, so it's nice to see a return to that. The chorus is very big, very epic. Um, you know, nothing profound going on with the lyrics, but uh, overall just a very effective, you know, catchy kind of chorus there. Another standout and possibly one of my favorite tracks on here is the title track, Heaven Upside Down. It reminds me a bit of The Pale Emperor as far as the kind of classic rock tinged guitars go here. You know, they have a slightly twangier, slightly lighter sound here, not really getting that industrial vibe. Overall, I think this is a really great song. I particularly like the line, I don't attract what I want, I attract what I am. Um, just a very introspective kind of song there. And a nice guitar solo in there. Very simple, but I thought pretty effective. It kind of fits that the vibe going on here. Just a very personal sounding song. It has a nice drive to it, nice guitars, stuff like that. And, you know, definitely one of my favorites on the album. There are some weaker moments. The song Tattooed in Reverse is okay. Uh, it kind of has a very bluesy... Uh, groovy type of feel to it. I don't think the vocals are particularly great in this song. They sound a little strained, maybe a little too high in the mix as well. You know, and overall, for some reason, this song just feels really long to me. Even though it's not, it's like four minutes or something like that. It just kind of overstays its welcome. And I think the same could be said about Threats of Romance, the closing track. Again, just a very similar vibe to Tattooed in Reverse, and it just doesn't quite work for me here. I think that kind of groovier vibe works better in a song like Kill For Me, which I think is a pretty good track as well. It has a nice kind of driving beat to it. And, you know, Manson with the lyrics again getting into a more darker gothic kind of territory here, which is nice to see him going back to that. Finally, Saturnalia was a really great song. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty long one, one of Manson's longer tunes, it's like eight minutes long, uh, but it definitely doesn't overstay its welcome. I don't think it wastes any of that eight minutes. It has a very nice build up to it throughout the song. It doesn't quite reach the crescendo that I was expecting after just such a long building up. But you know, overall, it's still a great song. It's got a kind of like sci-fi vibe to it. It kind of made me think of Rob Zombie. You know, if he was going to feature anyone on there, he would be the guy. So overall, I got to say I'm pretty impressed with the way Manson's music has been progressing through this, you know, latest era of his career. Overall, he's found a really great way to take his more current era of sound as far as, you know, Born Villain or The Pale Emperor goes and meld it quite well with his older kind of industrial sound. You know, he's bringing back a sort of darker vibe as far as the lyrics go. And, you know, overall, it's just nice to hear him, you know, sound very passionate about this project. It's really giving it his all in here. And um, I gotta say, you know, the results are fairly great. And so I'm gonna give this album a strong 4 out of 5. Definitely one to check out. Let me know what you think of the album in the comments. Check out some more reviews on the channel. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. So thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you next time. Yeah.